So I was asked recently to shoot a video on wood storage, um, which I think is something that a lot of us take that knowledge for granted. A lot of us that have been doing this for a while. Um, some of us have a hard time coming across green wood in general. I actually do myself, but I have good friends that help me out um, pretty much whenever I need, which I'm very, very thankful for. Um, but once you get this green wood, how do you keep it green? How do you keep it from drying out on you? Because everybody knows that when wood dries, it tends to crack when it's at a certain thickness. Um, and I found a few ways to combat this. Number one, you can um, you can leave entire logs as long as you want, just outside, and just keep it out of the elements. Like keep it under cover, out of the out of the sun, out of the rain. And um, this this is an option for people that are in more humid environments, I guess, because more arid environments, obviously the wood's going to dry quickly anyways, and the cracks are going to run pretty deep as it checks. Um, so that's that's an option that uh, I know a lot of people use that have property or have the room to do so. Me personally, I don't have that. Um, so what I do is I'll get a log home, I process it into billets as quick as I possibly can, usually that day if I can. I try to schedule uh, wood pickups for days where I, I'm not at work. And then uh, I'll process into billets. And one option that you can do is you can put it into Ziploc bags and put those billets in the freezer for extended periods of time. Um, you don't want to just chuck them in the freezer without them being in bags because your freezer is a cold, dry environment, so it will actually wick moisture out, even though that that moisture is frozen. If that makes sense, um, kind of kind of a good way to explain it is if you put a tray of ice cubes in the freezer, eventually, if you don't use those ice cubes, the ice gets the ice level gets lower and lower and lower and lower because even though it's frozen, it's still evaporating. So you want to use a good uh, good thick freezer grade Ziploc bag is what I use. Um, typically, freezing isn't the method I use, however. You can also store in Ziploc bags in the fridge. You just can't store for quite as long. Um, you might end up with some uh, some funky growths or smells of some sort um, because of the bacteria that could grow. So my my preferred option for, for storing green wood is actually in bins fully submerged in water. And note that I use the word fully. Um, if you If you leave wood in water and the wood's sticking out, you're gonna accumulate all kinds of bacteria, mold, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and to a degree, there's always gonna be some kind of bacteria in these bins regardless, which is why it's super, super important to change out the water very frequently. I do it about once a week. Um, depending on the species or what the water's been looking like in your wood bin, um, you may wanna do that more often. Some people may be less. Um, I know like, I have a bin of wood outside that's currently frozen. I think it's only got like maybe six pieces of wood in it or something like that. I don't have to worry about that at all. Um, for some odd reason, I don't know if it's quantity of water versus quantity of wood, but it's a very, very large bin. It's probably about this big by maybe about that wide and, and this deep. And there's only five pieces of wood in it. It's been out there for months and I haven't had to change the water. Every time I open it up, it looks crystal clear. So. Um, it must just be, you know, the amount of space that it has in the water and that bacteria maybe has a harder time growing um, when there's less wood versus water. I'm not sure. Um, but for our purposes, these containers here, these are the best ones that I found. I've used just plain Jane totes from, from Lowe's that are like, you know, $7 or whatever. They're much, much bigger than this thinking, well, I can store more wood. And uh, while that's true, it's, I find it's actually better to have smaller containers because I actually, I change the water out in one of my tubs in my house. And to carry a tote that's this big and full of water is not a fun ordeal. When you got to do that once a week, it becomes very exhausting. Um, and to try to dump that water without breaking the bin or getting the water everywhere is, is a task. So these ones, the size is eight and a half inches long by 14 and 7 eighths wide by 11 and an eighth tall. So that might seem small to some of you, but I can get cooking spoon sizes if I have my, um, my billets going long ways and cut them long, or I can have eating spoon size if I cut them and put them in this way. So typically what I'll do for my eating spoon blanks is I usually cut them in about eight inches and my, um, my cooking spoon blanks I might do you know, like 11 inches or so. Generally, my, my finished cooking spoons are around 11 inches, so I might go a little bit longer than that. Sometimes I'll just, I'll measure the bin and I will cut my wood to that length. 
Um, and if I end up losing a little bit of excess off the ends, that's okay. Um, but it, it makes it so I can store as much as possible in, in as small of a space as possible. So going back to talking about changing the water, um, today's the day that I would normally change this out. It's Monday. And these bins, by the way, while I'm, while I'm thinking about it, these are basically filed like legal grade bins. So they have a channel all the way around for files to hang in. And what's cool about them is that they have this, this seal all the way around. And I'm not gonna use the word waterproof because they're, they're not waterproof. If you tip these, they will leak. Um, but air has a harder time getting to them and they're, they're more leak resistant than any other bins I've used. Furthermore, these ones are, like I could probably stand on these without a problem or, or sit on them. They are very, very thick, very rigid. And so normally I wouldn't recommend stacking you know, three of these high or anything like that. But if I wanted to, I could stack this bin and I could stack that bin and I wouldn't even have to worry about it. Um, so obviously it's easier to store things vertically because they take up less space in, in your home that way. Um, but I just keep two stacks of these and I don't worry about the, the walls bowing out under the weight of the water and the weight of the wood or anything like that. So just make sure you get yourself a really good bin. See if I can find a model number on this for you guys. Um, this is a Sterilite. Uh, gasket box and again the the measurements for it are eight and a half long by 14 and 7 eighths wide by 11 and an eighth high and they are 32 quarts or 30 liters so hopefully if you guys go to go to find these that helps you out but um, the the lids are very 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 secure they got four really positive uh, hasps on them and they fit a good amount of, of wood if, if you're taking off anything you don't need and then putting it in the water like i don't leave the bark on the bark's just going to breed bacteria in your water um and trust me if you leave the bark on after one week the water gets disgusting it's horrible um there'll be all kinds of things growing on top and uh you're you're at that point probably risking some things there's like i said there's always going to be some kind of bacteria going on here that's why you need to change these frequently this one specifically i turned this light on so that hopefully you guys can see this is black walnut. I've got, I don't know, a little over half a dozen pieces in here. And um, this after one week, and I've had this walnut for months now, mind you. This is a very long-term solution, the water thing, if you do it properly. Um, but after a while, especially woods like this that are high in tannins, um, you watch your wood change color. It'll get darker. Cherry specifically, the, the water will turn like an orangish red. Um, this stuff will turn very, very brown if you leave it over time. And... One of the things I noticed too is that hopefully you guys can see this. I'm not sure if you can, but typically black walnut is a creamy white sapwood and a dark uh, heartwood. And what this actually has done is turn the, the nice white sapwood into a, a different tone of brown than the, the heartwood, which at first I wasn't a fan of. But once you start carving these, it actually produces some really interesting and beautiful colors. So I don't, I don't complain about it. I actually like the effect. Um, but let's talk about how long you can do this for. I've had, let's see, which bin is it? This bin right here is cherry. I'm almost out of it. I got about a half a dozen pieces of that left too. And that has been stored in there for over a year. And the water after, after one week is still nice and clear. Um, and I'm not noticing any differences in the carvability of the wood. It's not getting softer or rotting on me in the water or anything like that. It's the water's literally preserving it because it's not allowing oxygen to get to it and, and dry it out. And basically kind of the science behind that is that if you take, if you take a piece of wood that's wet and if you look at it under a microscope, the cells are way more open than when the wood is dry. Once the wood dries, those cells are closing up and the water's evacuating from them. So if you think of it in terms of like, I've had people ask, um, can I rehydrate wood after it's been dried? To an extent you can, it's not something I would, I would uh, you know, recommend and, and say you're gonna have a fun time with because I might put a log that's halfway seasoned in a, you know, a bucket of water and six months later, it still hasn't gotten all the way to the center. And that's because those cells are already closed up and they're not, they're not as susceptible to, um, to taking on water as open cells would be. So it's much, much easier, in my opinion, to take a green log, pop it in the water and keep it green than it is to uh, um, try to rehydrate, 
drier wood and, and make it green. And I, I've done that in the, in, in the past with, uh, with beech specifically, uh, a couple different woods. And it does help, you know, the outside few layers. It makes it more carvable, but I don't find it to be a great solution. So I just try to keep my wood green. I get it green, I keep it green. And um, it, it's, it's been a successful endeavor for me. And I think I've been doing wood like this for maybe, maybe two years now, uh, maybe a little bit less possibly. But um, let's see, what else can I come up with? Um, oh, I was told I used to mix species. I, as you can see here, I don't do that anymore. Um, I noticed that it seems to, I don't know if the different bacteria in the woods affect each other or, or, or what happens there, but I noticed that the growth on the water is much, much worse if you mix certain species. Like I used to have uh, spalted maple, spalted ash, and mulberry all in the same bin, and you would not believe how disgusting, I mean, stuff that thick floating on top of the water, and it was really, really disgusting to have to try to take care of. So back then I used to take all this outside and I used the hose and I, uh, I actually scrubbed my, my billets back then with a brush under hose water and um, had, to, had to clean the bins every single time. And while you will notice that you might get like a ring once you dump your water, there might be a ring around there, a little bit of, you know, some kind of material. Um, generally that blasts right off uh, with decent pressured water and it's not a problem. You will also notice that there is a change in smell. Generally, when you first cut most trees down, they have a rather pleasant smell, most carvable trees, I would say. Um, you know, fruit woods and nut woods and stuff like that. Like, I love the smell of fresh cherry. I love the smell of fresh walnut, but they don't quite smell as good when they've been mellowing in water for, you know, weeks, months, years. Um, so as long as you keep up on doing your, your weekly changings of the water, um, I noticed that the smells aren't unbearable and um, once once you carve it and you you know you rough out a spoon completely from it the smell is pretty much gone so by the time you finish it all the way that that smell is not not an issue anymore um, I think that's pretty much all I have for you guys on this uh, like I said this was uh, this was requested by by someone on social media and I do already have this information available in one of my Facebook albums. It's a, it's a frequently asked questions album in my photos there, but I figured I would offer this to kind of more, a, a more, um, a larger, a larger stage, um, and see if maybe I could help more people with this information. So hopefully this has been informative for some of you. It might be redundant for others and that's okay. Um, drop me a like if, if you learned something, um, you know, supporting my channel in any way definitely helps me out. And it helps me to help you guys because the more likes and more views I get and the more comments I get, the more I want to film more videos and help you guys out more. And that's kind of what this whole thing's about. I'm not on YouTube because I want to become some giant personality or something like that. I'm typically a lot more shy than what I seem on camera. Um, so, you know, this is just to help you guys. And as long as the interest is there, I will keep doing so. So drop a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I really appreciate you watching. Have a good one.